Welcome to the Shop of Hard Knocks, and my name is Will Kelly. I'm a monthly repair columnist for Vintage Guitar Magazine, as well as book author, guitar builder, and chief bottle washer here at Hard Knocks Guitars. I've discovered a really cool thing that I'd like to show you today from a company called Edgematic, and it's a way to electrical, chemically etch anything that's going in your guitar that has a flat metal or conductive surface to it. Now, etching is a thousands of years old process that involves electrolytic solutions and a low voltage current that will actually deposit and cause uh, the metal molecules to float away so to speak and that will uh, end up leaving a permanent mark into metal. You can use this system from Metromatic on your computer just use basics graphics programs or even Microsoft Word to print out your name your daughter's initials, uh, simple graphics, things like that, and then permanently etch and transfer them onto chrome, bronze, brass, copper, aluminum, stainless steel, black oxide. Uh, the possibilities are endless. So let me show you what's involved in this process and I'll show you how to modify a few parts yourself. Here's a representative sample of some of the electrolytic solutions that are available from Martronics, who's Etchematic's parent company. You have electrolytic solutions that etch in chrome or stainless, black oxide, brass, copper, and bronze, aluminum, a general purpose solution that works fairly well across all mediums, and then a dedicated high density stainless solution. This is the Mark 440 stencil maker developer, available from Martronics as well. This is a UV lamp with a removable tray that has a black flat rubber pad on it for your stencils, and then the glass flips over the uh, stencil, which is on top of an undeveloped piece of film, and you merely place it into the Mark 440, turn the lamp on, wait an appropriate amount of time, and this light develops your stencil for you. This is the Etchematic device itself. It consists of a voltage transformer that's coupled to a wire grid covered by a felt pad. And then electrolytic solution is applied to the underside of the pad, soaking it, making it very wet. And then when this ground clip is connected to the other side of the metal plate device, whatever it is that you're etching upon, low voltage current is generated it won't shock you, it can't hurt you, it won't burn you and uh, it etches and creates a permanent mark in the metal. So this works on 120 volts AC and very very portable, very easy to use and pretty foolproof. We'll take you through this step by step starting with the graphics design process and then printing that graphics that you've chosen out onto a clear transfer sheet which is then used to develop a blue stencil sheet, which is then used with the Etchematic device to create the mark in the metal that we all desire. So let's get started. To get started making your stencils, you have to begin with a graphics design. And the very first thing you'll need to do is do your page setup properly. Now what you want to do is set this for letter paper 8.5 inches by 11 inches tall and the reason is in portrait mode because the clear transfer stencil uh, that we're going to use for the developing process is eight and a half by 11 so the page is set up exactly per that size the next thing you're going to need to do is create a four by five inch box because that's the size of the developing film that you're going to actually be using to create stencils with okay so you've got two different media a clear transfer sheet and then a blue developing film draw any size rectangle that you want and then go right click on it go to size and position and make sure that it is four inches by five inches wide and you've got the correct format 
to begin placing your designs in. What we're going to do is insert some things. Uh, design philosophy wise, you want to make sure that you cram as much as you reasonably can in here because this is expensive film. But you want to make sure that you leave adequate boundaries around there so that you've got enough room to get your tape because the tape is what sticks this to the stencil itself. Okay, so we're going to keep inserting our various designs and things like that. And um, we're going to do that because we're going to lay these out in a cogent order that makes the most of the see I've got a border there and I've got a border there you know we want to make the most of the space we have within this little 4x5 and we're going to just keep laying in things that we're going to use here's a great picture of Rick now another thing you don't have to think up and down you can think side to side as well because now that's perfect. I can cut that out and I've got enough room to tape it on all four sides to lay that on. Okay, I've laid out literally everything I'm going to need for the stencil project into one 4 by 5 inch square. So I've got the uh, spread out so that you've got enough area to apply tape on all edges of the stencil cutouts. These will all be cut out individually. So now I'm going to print these out and I'm going to check the fit, so to speak, against the actual components by cutting each one of these out, laying it on top. If everything looks good, then we'll start with the clear. So we've printed out our transparency, and there it is. Nice clear definition, and when you hold this up against the light, you should not be able to see through the dark. If you do, you may want to get a little risky and try reprinting over this with the fast or draft setting just to add a little bit more ink to it. Here's a little tip to help you with your handling the developing film. It doesn't respond or develop in red light. So I used a red lid off of a old popcorn plastic tub and put it over my lamp to provide a red light that I can work under without exposing the film as it were before I wanted it to. So be creative. Alright, I apologize for the low light, but you have to use very low light or red or yellow light so that the blue stencil film won't develop. Okay, so we've got our clear stencil right here. Okay. This is the film and it's light sensitive. So you gotta work quickly. There's a little chrome tray right here with a black rubber pad in it and you want to set your stencil in it right on top of the black pad and then put your clear uh, overlay directly on top of it then once you've positioned it that way you take your piece of glass and lay that flat on top and compress. Then we're going to feed this into the developer and set our watch for two minutes. Turn on the lamp and develop away. Alright, we've let it cool down for a couple of minutes and voila, it's transferred perfectly into this. Now we've got to peel the clear plastic sheets off 
and then we're going to set it in the developer liquid and let it uh, do its magic there but we've got a good impression there so now that the stencil has been exposed what we need to do is peel the plastic sheets off both sides and it's a very very fine plastic film and it's very hard to get off but once you get both sides peeled away then you want to set the film itself into the developing fluid okay there's the second sheet and we are just going to lay this gently in here and then we're going to add our developing fluid this is reusable so don't throw it away after you've used it the first time make sure the entire sheet is covered and then we are going to set our timer for six minutes and then we'll let it go well there's my stencil all clean and dried off it came out perfectly there's the original clear transfer sheet with the inkjet on it and then there's the stencil that is ready for etching it came out perfectly and I can't wait to start marking up some metal here's a tip when you're going to etch a piece of metal make sure and polish it out perfectly or as best as you want it before you etch because after you do some etching you're not going to be able to clean the metal as well because it'll damage the actual etching design that you've placed into it. So we've got the stencil for the HK Hard Knocks logo laid over the truss rod plate. Use some scotch tape to cover up all exposed metal except for the logo that you want yourself. And we're going to hook the ground wire up like this. We've got the pad with some aluminum electrolyte on it and we're going to go for a count of 10. made this little jig here to help etch tuner buttons. They're very small and irregularly sized. They're sloped and rounded and everything like that. They, they roll. They'd be very difficult to, uh, to hold down with an etching machine. So what I did was take a block of wood and trace out the shape of the key and then routed it out with a router to a flat base. And then I put a thin layer of epoxy into the hole and let that dry almost to solid. And right before it set, I put the key back in it and then pressed it in with a clamp and it shaped itself, curved edges and all, to the, uh, to the tuner key. So now when you put the tuner key in there, it sits perfectly flat, just slightly above the level of the wood here. So it's a perfect surface to get the etching pad on. Then I laid a piece of conductive aluminum tape in here, wrapped it around and put a small screw in it, and that's where we're going to be our grounding plate. So right there... We've got a conductive surface. Go ahead and put it on a meter just to check to make sure. But you need to have a flow of electricity for the uh, unit to work. So we're just going to clip this right to there. And we've got conductivity ready to etch. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the ground from the etchematic to our plate there. And then we're going to take our solution, which is chrome stainless, and we're going to give this a really, really, really good soaking here. Okay, because we want to make sure that that etchant flows exactly where it needs to flow. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our stencil. We're going to lay it right on top into position. Tape it on there. Now, when I want to do multiple units, I can just lift this up, place another one in there, and it's in place, okay? So we are going to get going on the count of five.
Okay. So we clip this. Lift up our stencil. And there you go. Now we're going to put a little bit of neutralizer and or WD-40 on this just to make sure that the etchant and the electrolyte stop its process. We don't want any rust forming in the etch. Here are our project pieces finished up. We've got a nice industrial or gear design right here on this uh, Telecaster control plate. My signature etched beautifully into the top of a, an aluminum pickup cover. My company logo, Hard Knocks Guitars, etched onto a uh, metal truss rod cover. And my logo, HK, etched into these beautiful chrome die cast tuners. These are just some of the applications that you can use. Etching, electrochemical etching and the etchomatic tool to get cool, cool designs and personalization and customizations on your instrument. Make it your own and do it very easily with etchomatic.